The scheduler program is nearly done, and now we want to format that message. So let's take a look at how we can create a formatted message. So we're going to create the format item function, and what it's going to do is take our information that we've created from our other functions. So we had a title, and we had a date, and we had an owner's name. And we're going to put those together and format it so that it would look like this type of output, where we're going to put a label, event title, uh, date, time, and owner for each item. So that's what we're kind of shooting for there. So we can see here, I'm I've uh, created a format item function, and I'm going to call it with a set of arguments. So if you haven't reviewed the multi-parameter function video, you need to go back and look at that so we can build our format item function. So if we call it, we'll send it three arguments, the first one being the name, we, the second one being the date, and the third one being the title of our event. So let's go ahead and run that code. And then we see here, it doesn't quite look like what we have here. We see uh, event title, date, time, and owner. We see those items here, but uh, we can't see it uh, totally uh, formatted the way we would like. And there's a item in here, which is a escape character, is this backslash n. So if you can see that right before date, this backslash n, same here by it before owner, is that will create a new line. And so we, if we print this, we'll get the same output. So we're going to put that entire function call in a print statement. And then we see that we get that same output as we had below. So let's go ahead and build our format item function. So we're going to start with the def keyword and use format item. Parentheses and then a colon. And we see everything under there will be uh, indented. But this time, notice we're going to have to put some parameters in here, we need to capture this data that is passed to this function call. So rather than using user input, we're going to pass information to the function. So in this case, I'm going to pass in the uh, string of the username. So I'm just going to call that uh, name. So let's go ahead here and define, define those in here. And then the second one will be date time. And the last item will be the event title. And so now, when I call this function, it's required that it have three different arguments, including the function call, because that would be needed inside here. And then all I want to do in this function is return uh, this message that I have here. So formatted. So we've got to put these uh, line breaks in here. So let's go ahead and look at how we're going to do that. So the first one, we're going to say that uh, we're going to do a return. And then we're going to have the, the name. So let's start with the, we're going to start actually with event title. And then we're going to have the date, time, and then the owner. So the way that we'll do that, and we'll work backwards here, is we're going to return the, uh, the event. And then we're going to uh, put a new line after that. And so this is, we're going to, just going to show you how to do that there. We use the backslash n. So that will just start a new line. And then we're going to have the date time. I'll just do that as one word right there. And then I'm going to add another backslash n, which is a new line. 
And then finally, we're going to add the owner. So we need each of these, we need event to look like this string here, where it has the label uh, and, and the event. So let's go ahead and build that and make sure our return is at the proper indentation so it'll be part of the function. So let's go ahead and start with event. So I'm creating a new variable called event, and it's going to have this label here, event title. And then I'll put a space in there, and then we're going to add in the event title that we passed right here. So um, these are two strings. I have a literal string here and a string within a variable. So that's going to create this line right here. Then I need to do that same thing for each of these other two items. So let's go ahead and do date time. And that's going to be this string here, this label date time. And then we're going to add in the date time that we passed in. And then finally, we got to create the owner label and information. So let's go ahead and grab that string. So we have the owner. And then we're going to add in the, that's the name variable that was passed in as an argument. And so this should take the items that were passed in and print them out. So let's go ahead and test it. So where I already had a format item uh, loaded in memory, I'm going to replace it by running that code. And then I'm going to go ahead and uh, run this up here again. So let's go ahead and change something here. Just do it Alt and D so we can see the name. And then we'll just do this one as 12. And then we'll put an exclamation at the end of this one. Um, and then let's go ahead and we can see the new version. And we see that the Python study group on 212 and that Alt and D is the owner. So now we've created a formatted message. And we can use all of the functions that uh, we've created so far to create our program, the scheduler.